Okay. Uh, time for the follow-up to the patch is a review of every single character and their egos. So let's start with the free ones, event reward ego, uh, lifetime steal Don Quixote. So it's a TEF, so I would expect the cost to be in the 5 to 6 range. It is a single target. And the thing about single target here is that it has a unique effect where it boosts damage based on current last resource. Which is quite interesting. I will need to know the exact amount before I can judge this one. It is a blunt lust as well. So the theme of this um the theme of these uh, latest release of units seems to be lust. Because uh, the two egos here benefit a lot from lust resources. And then if we look at the indiscriminate, it will target the unit with the most HP. And before attack, it will boost damage based on the current lust and then spend it to further boost damage by resource spent. So it's quite interesting. If we if I knew the amount here, I could better judge this. Because for boss fights, it's possible if the boss is weak to these elements and you buff, buff this to a huge amount, you could do ridiculous amounts of damage if the math is right. And if you have accumulated enough lust beforehand. And uh, you will be accumulating a lot of lust if you look at the passive. Because at the start of the turn, it will convert random non-lust ego resources into lust resources. So that is quite interesting. It's a lust-based ego that scales off more lust. So, hmm. Looking kind of spicy. In addition, she also applies an additional burn count. Don't know the amount yet. But uh, inflicting burn count on a on Dawn is weird because she does not have um she does not have a what you might call it a, a burn ID so I really don't know why they are giving the burn IDs like no burn egos like okay I guess I guess Yi Sang is about to get Liu because I think I saw his photo in one of the Liu portraits and he does have both match flame but that's like the only instance of an ID and an ego together. Dawn has no burn ID, so why are they giving her burn count? It's... I don't know. Okay, so it's a weird one to put, like, because the theme of this one seems to be cooking, so it's it should be bleed count, right? But I don't know. Okay, so so far I can't really judge because I don't know the math here and I don't know the damage as well. I don't know the cost either. But so far this look looking like a, a pure lust. Uh, ego. It scales off lust and it generates more lust. The problematic part is that it does convert random non-lust ego resources. So you could get annoyed if he costs if Don Quixote's ego costs lust and something else. Then it'll be very awkward when you convert that resource into lust and now you don't have that resource to activate this ego. That's one problem I foresee if the elements are not are not uh, all lust. And my uh, initial theory is that this ego is going to be like 6 lust or 5 lust, something like that. Okay, and then we look at the free unit, Gregor. Gregor is basically... Um, Gregor is basically a uh, jack from Library of Ruina. He's meant to support Ryoshu. So if we look at his kit, it's actually more or less the same as G. Gregor's kit. It's two coins here. One coin here and four coins here. So this is like hack, this is like um dismember, and this is uh eviscerate. So looking spicy already in the coin department, we have to see the numbers before we can judge. Elements wise, um it's an interesting amount. So it's gluttony, envy, and lust. Uh it's a it's it's a bit of a weird spread because it doesn't fund legend I mean. Um I'm not sure what egos it funds yet. The green is good for ledger, the lust is good for body sack. I mean, it's a good body sack provider, but body sack is usually just for fragility, not really for any bleed themes. I can't think of any bleed stuff that would want this. And then let's look at the kits. It's uh, inflict paralyze. Great, paralyze getting fixed. So um, he will inflict distant paralyze, so it will depend on the speed. But if the target has bleed, then he will inflict paralyze next turn. So if he, even if he's slow, as long as you have bleed on the target, you can inflict paralyze next turn and the paralyze will actually take effect. So he won't have to worry too much about speed here. Look at skill 2, he inflicts more bleed count. Okay, so even more support for uh, bleeding. And then he inflicts bind as well. And bind is pretty solid because bind gives you agency, you get to clash against the targets that you want. 
Yep, so it's really not bad. And then uh, we got Butcher VN, 4 coin, looking spicy. It's a slash move. Uh, it's also Blood and Slash, which is an interesting combo. Butcher VN is inflict bleed, inflict paralyze, inflict paralyze, and then heal based on target's bleed. So it really is like Jack. Jack would also apply bleed, bind, not really paralyze, but uh, would also heal off the bleeds. Or I guess heal uh, as a passive, basically. Uh, so this just uh, brings back some some memories, I guess. Uh, depending on the coins, this could be an amazing skill. The problem is the paralyze is a bit um, sus because it's distant paralyze. Okay, and then the passive is pretty decent, actually. pretty decent as well. It heals HP at the start of the combat phase. Uh, healing HP at the start of the combat phase is. That's basically um, all the Gregor's passives. So, healing HP at the start of the combat phase is just nice to have. It makes Gregor into a pretty beefy character. At the start of the combat phase, the ally with the lowest HP heals HP. This one is fine as well. This just reminds me of base Gregor. Base Gregor literally has the same passive as uh, Jack the Gregor. It's just maybe the values might be different. And in addition, we also got this. Uh, boost the healing of the Ryoshu Chef passive Russell up. Which is quite interesting. Um, so, uh, we'll just keep this in mind when we look at Ryoshu. Um, it is an interesting decision to add even more HP healing. Uh, so, the whole point about Ryoshu, right, is that she's a healer. So, he is buffing her healing, but I don't think you need that much healing in the game currently. So, I don't know why we, why we would want to use these characters, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming the coinage is going to be good, so that we can use them in the future. Um, but the thing is that I don't see them like outperforming our top DPSs nowadays. Maybe if a, if a, if a certain fight needs some healing source to stay in, like for example, if I slithering again and he applied a bunch of poison, then maybe we would need something like that. But that's the only possible case I can think of right now. Uh, maybe Pima will surprise me and then I'll find a great use for these guys. So anyway, next one is Lifetime Steel Sinclair, which is the pool ego. Um, indiscriminate AoE, um, but don't be afraid of, about the uh, about this, uh, because uh, if it, the target's an ally, the indiscriminate AoE will not deal damage to them. So it's quite curious. I, I, I want to know how many targets this does, because it could be potentially very good. The targets the unit with the least HP. If the target is an ally, this deals zero. So no matter who is the lowest, Sinclair will target that character. I, I think you cannot decide who you aim at. It's just based on who is the least HP. And if the target is an ally, you just deal zero. But it's also AoE and you can target randomly. So the arrows might fly randomly left and right. Then we also got hit hit. If the target is an ally, you heal. Okay, interesting. And then tail hit. Inflict burn. And if the target is an ally, give haste and ego resource amp next turn. Ego resource amp is just to increase the amount of ego resources you earn from your skills by the effects count, so it's just by one. Unless the ego resource amp here is two, which would be pretty damn insane. It will basically be power creep for impending day. The problem here that I found is that it's very hard to get tail hits in this game currently. It's because we're supposed to lose a lot of sanity from popping egos. So if you were to keep spamming this ego, you could generate a lot of ego resource M. But at the same time, when you kill people or when you win clashes, you gain sanity back. So we are currently gaining too much to justify uh, getting this tail hit consistently. So I think it's going to be very tricky to get that ego resource M. We also need to see the value of that ego resource M. If this value is high, then this ego would be crazy good for just farming resources at the start. Yeah. So it's uh, looking pretty spicy as an ego. And then we look at the Peroda ego. It targets the unit with the least HP again. Before attack, you spend random resources to boost damage. I don't know the amount and I don't know how much, so I cannot comment. But it's interesting that this is more damage focus and this is more healing focus. So you got two modes to your lifetime steal. And this inflicts burn count. This one inflicts burn, but it's uh, on ally and, and, and if it's on tail hit. Yeah. Actually, wait. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's inflict burn or yeah, it could be or instead of n. Hmm. 
My English is not good enough to judge what this semicolon means. Is it or or and here? I don't know. Basically, I'm wondering if this would actually hit your ally and apply burn and give you this. Or is it hit your ally, do not apply burn and then give your ally this. It's, it's one of those two options. Even if I don't know now, I'll just test it and then find out later. But yeah. Anyway, still spewage is passive is kind of sus again for the reasons I explained before. Hails coins inflict burn if hitting an enemy. Hails coins, pretty tricky to get unless uh, you are on low sanity and we are getting too much sanity to get this. We need something that nukes us, nukes sanity in an AoE or nukes a specific ally's sanity to zero or something like that. That then these uh, low sanity uh, things would actually work. But right now, I don't think it's currently worth it. So this ego looks spicy. Uh, wait for the numbers to come out first before I say anything else. Um, these two, the two egos, Quixote and Sinclair, look like they synergize pretty well with each other. Uh, Quixote generates more lust resources, which I assume Sinclair here will consume as well to activate. And then if he rolls tails, and that's a pretty big if, he can make Sinclair get even more ego resources as well. So it kind of feeds into the whole lust uh, synergy. Yeah, with uh, Dawn generating a bunch of lust, and then Sinclair generating even more resources. So you can make up. It's like it's like two chefs cooking. You know, let them cook, and they'll make a bunch of ego resources for you. But especially, they'll make a lot of lust resource. So it seems pretty interesting. I like the design. Uh, as for the practicality and whether it'll be useful in fights, is uh, remains to be seen. I'll need to see the numbers as well as well as the cost. All right. Lastly, let's move on to Ryoshu. Ryoshu is, oh my god, it's it's just Pierre. Ryoshu is just Pierre now, it's so good looking. Alright, and then look, we have some PC, LH, IH, I, I don't know what these means, these are short forms. Ryoshu is a short form queen. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the, the elements. It's red, uh, purple, and uh, lust. It's alright, I can't think of any particular synergy except generating polysec like like crazy, like 2 and 3 generating a bunch of body side energy. Oh, she can feed 4th match flame, thank you random comment. Hmm, she can feed 4th match flame. It's red and lust, oh. Okay. She's cooking, that's interesting. Too bad she's not a burn character, <laughs> she's a bleed character, so. Uh, once again, a bleed character getting a burn ego. Why is it like this? Why? Is burn meant to be like supplemental damage or something? I don't know anymore. Okay, so let's look at the stuff. Um, two coins, good. Uh, on hit, inflict bleed count. On hit, gain appetite. Appetite increases the healing provided by the passive. Rustle up. Spend when the passive is activated. So, when you get appetite and you defeat an enemy, heal the ally with the lowest HP. And if you have appetite, you spend it to boost the healing based on its count. Here's the thing, right? If you bring her alone, right? Then heal the ally. Does it affect herself? If, because if it does, right, then she can solo the entire game. As long as she doesn't get staggered. Because she can just keep healing and healing and healing. She will be uh, basically a Gregor at that point. Especially with this appetite boosting the healing amount. Yeah. Quite interesting. I anticipate that appetite will be uh, something like uh, if you have one count, increase your healing by 10%. It'll be like fragility, maybe. If it's any higher than that, it could be a huge amount of healing. And uh, that will be uh, pretty uh, busted and probably enable some easy mode clears for uh, for railway or something along those lines. Could be like you. Uh, could be like the next coming of a win rate uh, railway. If this was a very strong passive. Okay, and then uh, her support passive is when an enemy is defeated, ally the lowest HP heals HP, which is fine. That's fine too. All right, I H three coins purple. So the fact that her coins is like increasing and starts at 2, it's very very good. This is like 2, 3, 4 coins, potentially a lot of damage. I really can't wait to see these numbers and then uh, he'll be busted, yeah? Okay, so we got Inflict Bind next turn here. Hits hit, Inflict Bleed, and on here if target is Bleed or Paralyzed, Inflict HP Healing down. So, based on this, my anticipation is that the uh, Mirror Dungeon, the Kitchen Dungeon, for this event will have some sort of self-healing and she really will help you to lower that healing amount a lot. I can also see this being used for K-Corp clearing, but when I was doing my uh, railway clears, 
I found that actually bursting them down is from 100 to 0 is not impossible. So I don't know if this is actually good enough to bring for the K Corp gang. Uh, maybe if you don't have enough damage or you brought the wrong units, then maybe you could consider using her to just reduce the healing so that you can kill them easier. Uh -huh. This one's a tricky one. I don't know how to judge this because most of the enemies that heal themselves, there's a way to manage them or there's a way to just one-shot them so they can't heal. So I think it's okay so far. Uh, inflict Bind is great. Inflict be Bleed is fine. It Bleed count here as well, so it's just another Bleeder basically. It's a Bleeder with a bunch of healing, so it's uh, pretty interesting. I don't know if I can value healing that highly currently. Uh, we don't have any content that requires healing or defense. We just want more damage, more damage, more damage. So if these coins are good enough, then maybe we can look past the healing part. It'll just be a bonus that she can heal as well. Then she does a bunch of damage and she can heal. Yep. The bind is great, the bleed count is great, it helps to support the bleed teams. HP healing down is nice, I don't think it's going to be super necessary unless P Moon decides to say, hey, we're going to put a bunch of enemies that heal a lot. And you cannot actually one shot them. Wait a minute, I just realized. IH, HP healing down on, on floor 13 because the enemies heal to full HP. If the HP healing down here affects that healing from the healing to full HP, huh? Let's say Ada always heals 300 HP, right? Then HP healing down heals up to 200, maybe? Oh, that's some potential there. That's something to be tested. That could cut your turns down because then you only need to one shot them from 200 HP, 300 HP, which would really help you a lot with the one shotting. Oh man, this could be a speedrun strat now that I think about it. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I did find uh, some potential here. It's not for K Corp, it's not for the Sacristy boys, it's for those, uh, it's for the Yas and Yata guys who heal to 100 every time. Hmm. If the HP healing down affects those guys, then this could be a very big amount of HP. Oh, alright. Can't wait to test this out. Can't wait to see other people test this out. I'm probably not going to do Railway again. I'm kind of done with it. I think once I post the the latest clear, which I got in 110 turns with uh, Shi Ishmael only. Well, Shi Ishmael was the main carry, more or less, with W Dawn. Yeah. I think after I post that one, I'll be done with Railway. Or maybe I'll just get bored and play Railway again. I don't know. I really love uh, P Moon's games. Okay, uh, sorry, where was I? Um, okay, I can cook anything. So cool, look, it's just the same pose as a picture here, very cute. I can cook anything. Boost damage based on targets missing HP. Now this one, uh, when I saw this, I was like, wait a minute. On missing HP, boss killer? Yeah, that, that has huge potential, actually. Depending on the scaling of this, we we could be seeing the next coming of a, of a ultra boss killer. There's so many coins here, and then you boost damage on targets missing HP. And then your final coin deals more damage, deals more damage, deals more damage. It's, it really just reminds me of Shank at this point. Like, I can't wait to see this one. This skill here has a lot of potential. Because with Railway inflating the enemy's HPs to some ridiculous amount, we could see this character becoming extremely good. Because once we get them chunked down to maybe uh, 300 HP out of 800, maybe we'll see like sh sh this skill doing 200 damage. Uh, I, I hope the math checks out. I don't want to be disappointed like Seven Otis. Seven Otis was disappointing not because of the damage or the clashing, but because the statuses. The statuses were really low. And in this case, the thing that would disappoint me the most is if her coin power was really low. And if the scaling on some of these skills weren't very high. Yeah, so... Okay, so out of all these characters, I'm looking forward to trying out the two egos. I think that they synergize very well with each other. I think there is potential here. To, to make some interesting themes, interesting uh, setups for uh, Railway. I think that Gregor might not be interesting unless his coin power is great. And I think Ryoshu has great potential. I think he could potentially be even better than Faust because of this skill tree and purely because of this skill tree. And I need to test IH just for stage 13 of Railway. Yeah, so I need to remember this HP healing down for when uh, she comes out. And then I need to double check the damage on this thing. Because this skill here looks like it could make her ridiculous. I don't care about the healing. I don't care about the bleed count stuff. Like those are nice to have. I care about this HP healing down to potentially reduce a lot of health that I have to work with on stage 13. 
and I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, and I want to see how much damage he can do if the target is missing uh like 300 HP for example. I can't wait. Yep. So that is it for the unit reviews. Uh, I'll I'll talk about them more once the uh, the actual numbers are out. And uh, right now the initial impression is Ryoshu looking very spicy. The two egos are looking okay. There's potential. I want to try them out first before I I make a final decision. I also want to see the coinage and cost. And then Gregor, I think if the coins aren't great, you're probably not going to use him at all. That's my opinion. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so for the banner, remember that uh, we are getting the Hell's Chicken banner, and we are also getting Dawn banner. So if you want W Dawn and Teleport Dawn, uh, feel free to pull for that banner. And if you don't want them or you just don't. Uh, if you just don't want to get Dawn, uh, then uh, maybe you pull the other banner. But the other banner, I will not say whether you should pull yet because I want to double check all the coins when they are released. So by then, I will uh, make my decision on whether you should pull these characters or not. So yeah, alright. Thank you for all for watching, and uh, that's it.